Okay. It is said there is no greater challenge in sport than the challenge to defend the title. In the case of the Detroit Pistons, defending is their specialty. Detroit comes at you for 48 minutes on all 94 feet of the floor. It's Piston Pride, Detroit Defense, the key to keeping the crown. He is the key to Chicago's success, the pride of the Windy City. But Michael Jordan is no longer just a one-man gang. Air Jordan has become a squadron, a driving force to be reckoned with. A young team with an air of invincibility. In last year's East Final, Jordan and the Bulls were frustrated, beaten, and eliminated. Now they remain the lone obstacle Detroit must overcome to make it back to the finals. From the Palace in Auburn Hills, Michigan, it's game one of the Eastern Conference Finals in the NBA, a best of seven series between the Chicago Bulls and the Detroit Pistons. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm John Paxson, despite the sprained ankle in the backcourt. The head coach is Phil Jackson, and for the Detroit Pistons, it's Dennis Rodman and James Edwards up front. Bill Lambeer at center. Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars start in the backcourt. Our officiating crew today, Jake O'Donnell, Bill Oaks, and Wally Rooney. James Edwards and Bill Cartwright will jump at center. Detroit has owned Chicago. All but six times, the last 28 times, these two have met, and Isaiah Thomas comes across in control for Detroit. Quickly, Lambeer with the long jumper. No good. Rebound, John Paxson. Paxson looks like he's left. See, he's got that uh, brace around his right knee. And the ankle that he sprained when he stepped on Cartwright in practice on Friday. Did not practice yesterday, as Leslie Visser told you. Here's Jordan, first shot of the game, no good. Isaiah Thomas with a rebound. Rodman hurries down to post up. Isaiah Thomas looks inside. Now backs away and sets the half-court offense. Ten on the shot clock. Paxson with a foul. So far, you see a Detroit Pistons team that uncharacteristically wants to push the ball up and explore. And when they have the isolation on a guy like Paxson, knowing that he's a bit injured, they're going to try to exploit that. Check the matchups. There's the, the glamour matchup of the game. Jordan and Dumars, they will go at each other for the full 48 or as long as both are in there. Here's Jordan with the steal. It's a two-on-one. Paxson and a great defensive play by Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> Well, we had a chance to see two good defensive plays there. Michael Jordan doesn't get enough credit, and Isaiah Thomas on the other end, great, particularly at the advantage break when he's on defense. Matter of fact, you're watching three members of the All-NBA defensive first team on the court today. Rodman and Dumars for Detroit, and Michael Jordan for Chicago. There's Dumars from the corner, short. Maxson, this time guarded by Dumars. Thomas on Jordan down in the post. And he's fronting him right now. There's the alley-oop for Michael. Has a big size advantage, but James Edwards with a block shot. Cartwright throws it away. Grant chases it down, saves it, throws it away again. Both teams may be a little anxiety-ridden here, particularly in being able to develop the type of offense that they want on each end. Nevertheless, though, we're seeing excellent defense. Both teams starting to dig in right from the start. Defense more than nerves, Lenny? Well, certainly they're forcing the passes away. That was a great block there on Michael Jordan in the last Bulls possession. So you got to give the defense some credit. Here's Edwards. Still no score in the game. Grant with the rebound. We played two minutes. It's zip-zip. Pippen. Double team from Lambeer. Back to Jordan for three. Got it. The drought is broken. And certainly the Jordan rules don't apply when you're 23, 24 feet from the basket and there's no help. Joe Dumars would just put a hand in Jordan's face. Michael is now 11 of 30 from three-point range in the playoffs. Here's Isaiah Thomas. Not there. 
Paxson, Pippen hurrying down court. This time Isaiah Thomas draws a defensive assignment on Paxson and a foul underneath on Bill Lambeer. Johnny Daly working on seven years as head coach, seven years in the playoffs, last four in the Eastern Conference Finals, and of course the defending world champions. Jordan Dumars. Bill Cartwright has had shooting problems in the playoffs and air ball with his first ever. He's only shooting 42%. A lot of people have complained that Billy Cartwright has become Mr. Invisible, but Phil Jackson, as you see him here, really takes up for Billy, saying that it's his tendonitis that's affected his jump shot. Another good defensive play. Here comes Detroit. It's a 3-0 Chicago Lee. Lambeer spots up for the three. Anytime you get a 6-11 guy shooting three-pointer, you really don't have an awful lot of big guys that'll come out and defend him. Jordan dishes right, Lambeer with a rebound. Quick outlet pass to Dumars. Rodman has trouble controlling the ball and misses the layup, gets the follow, it won't go either. Finally. Opportunity fast break, that's what the Pistons love. They're not a fast breaking team, but when they get those advantage situations, they'll take advantage of it every time, and Rodman is relentless. Chicago one of seven from the field, Pistons are two of eight. So cold shooting or good defense by both teams. Continuation foul, count the basket. Well, on that play, Vern, you can take your pick. It was good defense there, and it certainly wasn't cold shooting. Michael Jordan's about to warm it up. But again, you see Dennis Rodman step over a bit too late. If the Jordan rules hold true, Rodman should step over and anticipate maybe before Michael Jordan puts it on the floor, forcing Michael to throw it back outside. Jordan completes the three-point play. 8.26 to go, first quarter. Bulls up by one. Right now, we see the Bulls priming themselves with some full-court pressure. They like to extend themselves, particularly against the Pistons, because they feel the Pistons are prone to turn it over. Isaiah Thomas, James Edwards. Been a big factor since he took over his starting role. Well, he's established an inside game and taken a lot of pressure off the Pistons' perimeter game, which isn't the best in the league. Now Jordan, the pick from Grant. Loose ball foul, no, uh, rather no uh, shot. The foul is on Joe Dumars. Second foul on him. Very important right now. Michael Jordan establishing something, sending a message that he's not going to be afraid of the Jordan rules. That got Chuck Daly off the bench because he didn't think it should have been called on Dumars. Now they've changed it, we are told, and it's on Lambeer, so Daly won the argument. Nevertheless, though, Michael Jordan continues to attack rather than sit back and wait for the defense to come to him and react to it. John Sally getting ready to check in. 7.43 to go, first period. Dumars, pump fake. Nice move in the air, the shot again, no good. Edwards saves it, kicks it. And the out of bounds, Chicago. Now John Sally makes his first appearance in the ball game, replacing Bill Lambert. John Paxson, Scotty Pippen, guarded by Dennis Rodman, the defensive player of the year in the NBA. Paxson hasn't scored much of late. Here's Cartwright backing in over Sally. Gets the bounce. Bill Cartwright, we spoke earlier about the tendonitis. It's in his knee, and it affects him on his jump shot. He can't get the ride, but with the one-hand jump hook, he's very effective inside. 10-7, Chicago with an early lead. Isaiah Thomas for three. Nope. Cole shooting thus far in game one of this best of seven. Of course, the leading scorer in the NBA, Joe Dumars, an all defensive player in the NBA. We asked Joe Dumars, how do you defend Michael Jordan? First of all, I try to deny him the ball as much as possible. I figure, you know, he can't score if he doesn't have it. And uh, second, when he does have it, uh, I don't do anything extra special. I, I rarely get steals, I rarely block shots. Uh, I just try to position myself and make him take as tough a shot as possible. Uh, just try to make him work as hard as possible. Uh, put some body on him. Uh, you know, basic things. Uh, it's nothing fancy. Uh, you can't do anything fancy with him. 
As so often happens uh, among great athletes, there's a mutuality of respect among Dumars and Jordan. As a matter of fact, they became very good friends at the All-Star Game in Miami this year when Michael invited Joe and his wife up to his room. And the two couples became friends and said that friendship will no doubt flourish long after their respective careers are concluded. Here's Jordan. Pump fakes over Dumars, finds the pass, Grant inside. Well, that was great patience by Michael. He took the double team, waited for Grant to uh, make himself available and dished it underneath. That's what he's going to have to do, take the double team rather than force something. Five-point lead by Chicago. Isaiah Thomas. Detroit only 3 of 11 so far. Traveling called on John Sally. Well, so far, Detroit has been unwilling to explore inside to the post area, particularly James Edwards. And when they have looked there, it's been taken away by the Bulls, but the Pistons aren't going to second and third options. They're willing to go one-on-one. -on -one. That's why they've been shooting so poorly. So it's, here's the pass inside. Good defense more than it is just poor shooting, Glenn. Certainly, you have to explore, particularly in the playoffs when teams know each other so well, you have to explore your second and third options off of a play. If you just break down and try to go one-on-one, -on -one, the defense is set, nobody's moving, and it's much easier. Last foul on John Sally. Nice scoop shot, but Rodman gets the loose ball. 12-5, Chicago leads. They won game one here of the conference finals last year. That shot short, Jordan with the rebound. Again, not looking for a real good shot inside. inside. Another foul on the Pistons. Said 12-5, it's a 12-7 score with 5.53 to go. Well, on this end, the Pistons are having some trouble with their team defense because while they're set up to seal off some of the other guys, Michael Jordan's been the bulk of the Chicago offense, and he's really had his way in penetrating. Detroit in the penalty, so Michael Jordan will shoot after the Isaiah Thomas foul. Jordan hitting 81% from the line in the playoffs after an 85% season from the free throw line. Interesting, though, Jordan averaging 34 points over the full season, 33.6, but against Detroit, he's averaging only 26 and more significantly hitting only 42% of his shots. So they have his number to a degree. Underneath, nice play. James Edwards. Excellent ball movement. That's what they have to do and continue to attack against the pressure. Out of you. Jordan, trouble controlling. No trouble putting it in. Well, if you can't get through a defense with your passing or setting up in the post, the best way is to throw over it, especially when you have a high flyer. Michael Jordan has almost half of his average per game against Detroit. He's got 12. And Bill Cartwright's going to get called for this one. Ball is on 24. Bill Cartwright is first the team second. Well, Bill Cartwright prior to that particular play had been successful in pushing James Edwards out a bit, pushing him off the blocks where he likes to set up. That's why the Pistons haven't been successful with their post team. Battle continues, Edwards and Cartwright. This time, Edwards goes baseline, turnaround jumper is good. Those jump shots by Joe Dumars and Isaiah Thomas become a lot easier when James Edwards is hitting from inside. Defenses can't extend. Rodman for Detroit. Isaiah Thomas dipping out with a double team. John Sally guarded by Horace Grant. Nice move. Blocking foul underneath. Well, that's a pretty difficult thing for a coach for the defense to understand how a seven-footer can shake and bake and handle the ball outside and then slice to the lane without anyone stepping up and contesting him until he gets to the basket. You can't do that when the guy handling the ball is seven feet tall. You've got to get him outside while he's still putting it on the floor. That's where he's most vulnerable. Gets the first. In the sweep of Indiana in the first round of the playoff, John Sally averaged 16 points per game and uh, cut that average in half against New York when he averaged just eight, but uh, just one of them. such a deep bench for the Pistons. And certainly when John Sally scores a lot of points, that's an added uh, benefit because he's a defensive player. He's a guy who's locked, shot, very agile, can play a lot of positions, small forward, big forward, and center. Lead is cut to three. It was seven. 
There's Paxson. Looks inside for Cartwright. Jump hook by Cartwright, too strong. Sally knocks it out of bounds. Miscommunication with James Edwards. But certainly a coach, particularly Chuck Daly with his team, as much as they hustle, the effort that they give, he can't be upset with that because that's what you call a hustle play. You like to see your men on the board. Scotty Pippen will inbound. Michael Jordan in front of Dumars. Grant for two. Horace Grant now has four. And the lead back to five at 18-15. Four minutes to go, quarter number one. Chicago is seven of 16, Detroit five of 13 thus far. Rodman posting up, Pippen fronts him for a second, and then Dumars drives it up. Scotty Pippen gave Dennis Rodman a bit of his own medicine in battling him for the post, but what it did was open up the lane. Pippen trying to fight too much. Jordan with a double team. Sally comes out. Scotty Pippen. Long rebound. Isaiah Thomas controls for Detroit. Alley-oop. Give him three points and went in. Unbelievable. And you see Phil Jackson in the background is arguing that they touched the ball and it should be offensive interference. I don't think they did. When we get a chance, we'll look. Here's Grant at the other end. No. Thomas will say he planned it all along. Here's Dumars. Behind the back pass. Sally foul. Shoot the free throw. We see the pass. At least from this angle, it didn't look as though the ball was touched, but maybe the rim was, and that in itself was offensive interference. We'll never know now. I'll show you in six minutes. Still four to go. In the first quarter of play, Isaiah Thomas launches what was intended as a pass, but watch what happens underneath, Len Elmore. Well, you see there is contact made with the net and the rim right here. Now, I know the rules state that you can't put your hand through the rim, um, there should be some language in there speaking of making contact with the rim while the ball's in the downward flight. We're frantically looking it up as a matter of fact. Well, see, that never happened to me, so. <laughs> All mine were good. John, yes, I know, especially from that, that range, right? And you, the defensive specialist <laughs> in the NBA, right? John Sally, Isaiah Thomas tried to make the pass and went in for what was counted as a three-pointer. We are tied at 18. Let's check in with Leslie Visser. Les? Vern, in the huddle just then, Chuck Daly told his team that he wants them to execute on the offensive end. He said, don't settle for 20-foot shots. Defensively, what a surprise. He wants them to get up on Michael Jordan. <laughs> okay, Les. John Sally back at the uh, free throw line. Probably the most gregarious of the Detroit Pistons. Matter of fact, he has purchased a 62-room house in downtown Detroit near Seven Mile Road. We asked him before the game, it's got 15 bedrooms, said, have you furnished them all yet? And he said, nope, not until I get a new contract. He said, I've got visions of a 62-room house, and they say, guess what, you're going to Sacramento. Paxson. Yeah, Sally hits one of two. 2.54 to go, first quarter. Right can't handle it. Stacey King has come into the game now for the Chicago Bulls. Isaiah Thomas looks underneath for Edwards posting up on King. There's a the double team cart right. Jordan tips it away. Rodman chases it down. John Sally. Cartwright's going to get shoved. The call for shoving James Edwards. Well, the Bulls' defensive execution worked up until that last particular play. Ball goes inside to James Edwards, forces him to dump it back outside. They cover every swing of the ball, force an outside shot, but Bill Cartwright fouls on the rebound by covering each movement of the ball and forcing the Pistons to shoot from outside. The Bulls have really accomplished what they set out to do. James Edwards, the 14-year vet out of the University of Washington, misses the first. Phil Jackson looks on. What a season Edwards is having last year. The last two years in the playoffs, he averaged about six points a game. This year, 18 per ball game. And it's a piston lead of 20 to 18. They once trailed by seven. 
Jordan, Benny Johnson has come in the lineup now, and he is guarding Jordan. There's Michael. Got it. Michael. So let's check the lineup for Detroit. It's Isaiah Thomas, Rodman, Sally, Johnson, and James Edwards. For the Pistons, Paxson, Grant, King, Jordan, and Bill Cartwright. Tied at 20. Edwards. Runs out. Just had a chance to see James Edwards. Why he's so effective is he gets his head and shoulders low and past you and goes up. It's very difficult for a postman to guard him. Now look at the triple team as Sally and Rodman collapsed on Jordan, and Jordan is still down. Michael is on the floor. Here's Sally underneath. Shot no good. Jordan just now getting to his feet, but limping badly. John Paxson penetrates. Nice scoop shot, but it uh, didn't get the spin. Jordan is now running up at the other end, and Edwards lays it in. Twenty-two, twenty. See how badly he might be injured. Twenty-second timeout called by Chicago to check the Jordan injury. Well, at the beginning of the telecast, we mentioned how physical Detroit plays defense. Here, three guys sandwich Michael Jordan. He puts it up. Now, Michael Jordan goes down. He's in obvious pain. And here from another angle, we see the three guys in the lane, and they want to seal him away from the basket. But being in such obvious pain, as the ball went down on the other side, Jordan gets back up. Here again, the implementation of the Jordan rules. Three guys are going to be around him at every turn, particularly when he's about to shoot the ball and make him work. But as much pain as he's in there, he still jumps up and runs down on the other end on the defensive end. Now, the reason he has to do that, one, is not to let Detroit believe that they can intimidate him with that type of penetration and then the bump. And the other thing is to show his teammates he's still in the game. He has to be an example because he's the leader on this team. Saw so Sally, Rodman, and Vinnie Johnson. All three collapse on him. Now, Craig Hodges has entered the game for the first time for Chicago. There's the inside pass. Stacy King from Michael Jordan. Mostly Wizard checked with the Chicago trainer, and Michael landed on his hip, so it's the hip that bothered him. But he will continue. Not only that, Vern, he went to the same exact spot where he was knocked down. The three guys came back on him, and this time he made good of it. Vinnie Johnson over Jordan. 24-22, final 43 seconds. Quarter number one from the Palace in Auburn Hills. Vern Lundquist, along with Glenn Elmore, and Leslie Jesse. Rebound Detroit. Isaiah Thomas tries to save it, and it goes off Morris Grant. It'll be Detroit's the inbound. Now Scotty Pippen going to come back in, and Michael Jordan will get a rest. No, he won't. Thought he was going to go out. But he is obviously favoring that left hip. B.J. Armstrong will enter the game. Certainly not the way Michael Jordan wants to start this series, nor the Chicago Bulls. Hopefully it's not a real serious injury. You got Dennis Rodman on the other side who seems to be hurt. But both guys are going to see a lot of ice right now. Rodman just hopped off the court, and he's being tended to by Mike Abdenauer, the uh, Detroit trainer. So Jordan and Rodman on the bench with injuries. Final 20 seconds, first quarter, and a two-point Detroit lead. Thomas isolated on B.J. Armstrong, who's averaged 20 points in the playoffs for Chicago. Skip pass. Aguirre in. That shot no good. Armstrong loses control. Hodges backs up for a three-point effort. Picked away by Aguirre. That's the end of the first period with our score. Detroit 24. Back at the Palace, they said that this would be a physical series. Well, Michael Jordan is over on the bench with an ice pack on his the upper part of his left hip. He bruised it in a fall a couple trips ago down court. On the other end, Dennis Rodman sprained his left ankle, but he'll be back. Vern? As a matter of, matter of fact, Leslie, Dennis Rodman was sprinting up and down the side of the court, testing that left ankle. No such activity from Michael Jordan, who continues trying to ease the pain of that left hip. So Rodman and Jordan remain on the bench as we start quarter number two, with the Pistons up by two, having trailed by seven at one point, 14 to seven. 
Well, it'll be interesting to see what the Pistons defense does now without Michael Jordan. That's been their main focus. And without him, it seems as though they want to extend their defense a little more, put some pressure on B.J. Armstrong. Well, they just did. Here's Isaiah Thomas, who has a world of experience. And Sally with the follow. B.J. Armstrong, the rookie out of Iowa, with Craig Hodges in the backcourt. Well, Phil Jackson has some relatively young and inexperienced players particularly from the playoff, out here on the floor. He's got to be very careful that they don't self-destruct and get this crowd really into this game, because that could destroy the confidence that they had coming into this game. Stacy King. Oh, a rookie from Oklahoma. Let's watch Isaiah Thomas with a quick hand. Well, Isaiah Thomas is a master. He's been around a long time. He takes the rookie to school at that point. And those are the things, a nice follow by Sally, but those are the things that'll take the confidence away of a rookie in a big playoff series. Joe Dumar is back in to give Isaiah Thomas a rest. James Edwards, big rebound, knocked away by Scotty Pippen, and then controlled by Joe Dumars. Four point Detroit edge, Vinny Johnson, Edwards. There's Johnson driving by Hodges, the ball stripped, but Edwards, who is four of six, is now four of seven. Armstrong comes out for Chicago, three on two break. Scotty Pippen with Mark Aguirre guarding him, Hodges for three, no. I'm sure Phil would want to see the Bulls work for a better shot than that, but defensively they made a stand and kind of regained their footing. Aguirre had a huge game in game four against New York, 17 in the second quarter. Now back it comes to Armstrong, nice pass underneath. Well, again, the foundation is the defense. Chicago, a much better defensive team this year, creates the turnover, and then B.J. Armstrong didn't lose his confidence from the steal, comes down with a nice assist, a nice look inside the middle. Dumars will test Armstrong now. Backs in, Edwards waits. Foul on B.J. Armstrong. Ed Dealey is going to make his first appearance for the Chicago Bulls, and Bill Lambeer is getting ready to check back in. Time has been called with the Pistons up by three. What a game seven in the West yesterday as Portland outlasted San Antonio by three in overtime. Terry Porter with a huge game, 36 points and nine assists. Portland goes on to face Phoenix now in the Western Conference playoffs. That best of seven series starts tomorrow night. Then they'll continue Wednesday at Portland, Friday at Phoenix. Lenny and I will be in Phoenix next Sunday for game four, and then five, six, and seven, respectively, Portland, Phoenix, and Portland. And coming next on CBS, round four of the Southwestern Colonial Bell Golf Tournament from Fort Worth, Curtis Strange and Ben Crenshaw are tied after three. They had a rain delay this morning, something the Texans are getting used to in the last month. Boy, if they had had deluges down there. But round four, the final round of the Colonial with Crenshaw and Strange tied as they tee off in the final round. Now back to play here with Donovan with three to go in a half. And an illegal defense called against the Chicago Bulls. That's the first. That's a warning. We take a look at um, bench scoring here. Detroit has the edge so far. But B.J. Armstrong for the Bulls, he and Stacey King have really emerged as major contributors for the Bulls. They've done a nice job in the Philadelphia series, and they're going to be counted on a lot in this series. Vinny Johnson, one of the bench members for the Detroit Pistons gets two more, so it's a 9 2 edge now. As a matter of fact, Detroit had the edge over the full season in bench scoring. Their bench outscored Chicago's 148 to 102 in the five regular season games. Here's Stacey King. And here are the Bulls with two rookies, although at this point of the season they can't really be called rookies anymore. And that shot will count? No, it will not. Johnson can't believe it, thought he was going to get the basket. Well, the difference, obviously, between the benches is a maturity factor as much as talent. And as, as we see Michael Jordan about to re-enter the game, the maturity of the Pistons bench with uh, Vinnie Johnson and Mark McGuire and John Sally, they really could be starters anywhere else, obviously, but they know what their roles are, and it's been very defined. The Bulls rookies are still finding their way, but as they have in the Milwaukee series and in the Philadelphia series, they've come on very strong. Uh, Dumars and Johnson with Lambeer, McGuire, and Rodman on the court. Michael Jordan back in. McGuire strong to the basket. And I 
I think they called it on Mark McGuire. Yes. Nine minutes to go, first half. Four points, Piston Lee. Jordan back in. He was five of eight and had 14 points when he went to the bench with that hip injury. Underneath, as Johnson guards Jordan. Illegal defense. Detroit. That's their first hand award. Considering the Detroit's Jordan rules, that should never happen. Michael Jordan isolated on the strong side, cleared out. They should always have a guy over there if they're adhering to the rules, but that time they just had people kind of in between. Somebody not paying attention. Jordan and Johnson saw Dumars come over to help. Loose ball chased down by Stacy King. For three. Nope. Bodies falling down at the baseline. And here's Joe Dumars. Now Benny Johnson guarded by B.J. Armstrong. Nice rebound by Scotty Pippen. Well, you got you got to give the Bulls a lot of pressure, a lot of credit defensively. They've been doing a nice job in facing up to the shooters and taking over inside, not letting them get more than one shot. Ed Neely. Quickly underneath and two more. Well, that matchup will emerge as this series series grows. Pippen against Dennis Rodman. That time Scotty Pippen snaked to the basket. He got the better of it. Bill Jackson was talking with us last night about this Detroit team. NBA champions and of course they've earned the title uh, mostly on defense. Here's Dumars for two. But they do get shots like that. He said, here's what I think about their offense. It is not aesthetically pleasing, but it's very effective. It's certainly versatile. They have enough weapons out there to use. Pippen got away with a shove on Rodman and goes off the glass for two. Well, what's happening right now, Dennis Rodman throughout the season, the NBA's best defensive player, has been known to take flops, as they call them. That time, in the official's opinion, it was. There wasn't enough energy behind that push to really cause a foul, according to the official. Daly is arguing about that over on the bench. Let's watch and see the flop. See the degree of difficulty here. Now, the, the, the intent certainly was there. Now, whether or not there was enough to call a foul remains to be seen. Chase down by Armstrong. Nice save. Good defense by Chicago. And a chance to tie. King rejected underneath Lambeer and Rodman both got there. 6.56 to go in the first half. And Detroit is up by two with a 30 to 28 in game thus far. Chicago hitting only 36%, Detroit 41. Jordan has not scored since the hip injury. Dennis Rodman with a slight ankle injury, but they're both back on the court. And Detroit has out rebounded Chicago 18 to 13. Thus far through the playoffs, we're going to miss the Lakers and the Celtics. First time in 11 years they've not been in the finals. Portland back in. Congratulations to the Trailblazers. Conference final first time since 77, and the home court advantage has held true. And at least Len Elmore thus far here in the Palace, a two-point edge for the Pistons, but Chicago playing very well thus far. Well, defensively particularly, both teams are sealing off the middle, forcing a lot of perimeter shots. Neither one of them are the great perimeter shooters of the NBA, but they are playing hard nose and not allow, allowing easy baskets, and that's very important at this stage. Scotty Pippen, scoop shot under Bill Lambert, and we're tied at 30. Largest lead of the game was a seven-point margin for Chicago at 14 to 7. Detroit came back to tie it up at 18, and they've had a four-point edge as their largest. Here's Lambeer for two. Rebound Armstrong. DJ using the pick from Neely. Hit the post up against Rodman. Illegal defense, that's the second, so Chicago will shoot the technical. And it's very interesting that the Bulls in this particular set came back. Did you see Chuck Daly with a look of disbelief, or whatever look that is right there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was interesting on the last play that the Bulls came out and set up a play to go right at Dennis Rodman. Again, we mentioned he's the best defensive player as voted by the players and, and sports writers, the best defensive player in the NBA, now they're going at him, which leads me to believe that Phil Jackson is really going to attack the strengths of the Pistons because they're doing such a good job, the Bulls are, defensively. 
Now Scotty Pippen. Whoops, lost it. McGuire has it. Here's the fast break to Johnson. Jordan hurries back. And Johnson was harassed by Michael Jordan. Dumars comes down for Detroit. Under six minutes to go in the first half. Game one, conference finals, best of seven. From the baseline, and he got it. Detroit with a nice job of spreading the Bulls out, forcing them to cover every perimeter player, and no one got to Denny Johnson. Michael Jordan scoreless in this quarter. Injured his left hip in late first period. Ed Neely. Lambeer. A little volleyball, and then Lambeer comes down with it. Johnson looks back to Rodman, and Horace Grant gets right in the middle of things, and a loose ball foul. Loose ball foul on Denny Johnson. Called on Benny Johnson. Well, if there's something that the Pistons aren't altogether comfortable with, that is a fast break situation without Isaiah Thomas leading it. And that time, they really didn't execute well. There wasn't enough spacing. One player could guard both Rodman and Vinnie Johnson. Guard riding Grant come back in for Chicago. Chuck Daly counters with James Edwards and Isaiah Thomas. Benny Johnson and Bill Lambeer will get a rest for the Detroit Pistons. Rebounds now, the edge by six for Detroit. Look for the backdoor play. Cartwright. Thomas way up for the rebound. 32-31 Pistons nearing the five-minute mark of the first half. Good defensive job by Michael Jordan on Joe Dumars. Back to Edwards. Jordan comes down with it for Chicago. Michael, two more. First two of the quarter. He's got 16. Open floor. And I'm sorry, open floor situation. Michael Jordan, as he comes up limping again. The Jordan rules don't apply when there's an open floor. People have to get to him, and Detroit's very slow in doing so. Keep your eye on Jordan. He's limping. Now left side, long jumper, Isaiah Thomas. Mark McGuire with the put back. That's his first basket. One of the few times the Bulls have allowed second shot opportunity. Jordan will shoot a couple. We see in the open floor, this is a transition basket. Michael Jordan down the right sideline. Off balance, he goes down. Mark Aguirre wants to step over him rather than help him up. But those are the areas where he's most dangerous, coming down the sideline. If you don't get the help there quick enough, he's going to be in the paint before you know it. Then it's uh, all she wrote there. You can see how his career scoring playoff average has dropped against Detroit. It's still pretty gaudy at 29 points per game, but his scoring average against other teams is outrageous. 4.05 to go before halftime. Thomas, nice bounce pass to Aguirre. And Mark Aguirre having a little bit of offensive trouble here in quarter number two. McGuire with his lowest scoring average this year since he's been in the league. No bounce to Jordan, and Rodman plays it for Detroit. McGuire scoring at 14 points in his new role as a sixth man this year for the Pistons. Coming over from Dallas for Adrian Bentley last year. Underneath, Scotty Pippen fouls Aguirre. He's posted up. Well, coming up at halftime, we've got Pat O'Brien and Bill Raftery with the NBA lottery as 11 teams buy for the right to make the first pick in the NBA draft. That's coming up at halftime. Jordan gets the foul. Well, two possessions. Detroit has recognized that they do have some openings inside. Previously, they hadn't been able to get the ball into the post, but uh, Mark Aguirre is too strong for Scottie Pippen when he catches him on the post, and they're trying to post up Michael Jordan inside. 14th foul, next time they go in the penalty. Here's Jordan guarding Rodman down low. Dumars for three, no. Battle for it, Edwards. Scotty Pippen, good job of hustling. Now we'll slow it down and bring it back out. Rodman and Jordan this time. Blocking foul, Dennis Rodman. Now by Jake O'Donnell to the dismay of this sellout crowd. And Jordan's on the floor again. 
Well, as I mentioned before, Dennis Rodman, being a great defensive player he is, has a tendency to flop. He goes to the well much too often right there. He gets his feet tangled up with Michael Jordan. Time has been called by Chicago. They stopped the clock with 3.02 to go in the first half. They're up by a member of that draft who graduated from Harvard Law School. Well, thank you. Pat's got a <laughs> wonderful grasp for trivia there. <laughs> Let me tell you. You say, would you have been a lottery pick, do you think? Uh, these days, based on what I did in college, and I, I have a feeling I would have, but as fate would have it, born about 10 years too early. Yeah, you, you didn't miss the, the, the great riches of the NBA, but the greatest riches of the NBA, you bet. 35-34, 3.02 to go before halftime. Underneath, B.J. Armstrong disconnects with Scotty Pippen. 2.59 to go before halftime, 35-34. Let's check the lineups now. Dumars, Rodman, Edwards, Aguirre, and Thomas for Detroit. Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen. Grant Armstrong, that shot no good. Cartwright. No, not Cartwright. Whoa. Edwards. We apologize to all you lip readers out there. But you, you take a look at this play here on the lower right side of your screen. The only thing that could have been called was that James Edwards was holding on before he was knocked down. Bill Cartwright, And after all of that, Bill Cartwright goes to the other end. Cartwright, 81% over the regular season, but struggling in the free throw line as he has been from the field. He's hitting only 68%. He gets one of two. Let's check in uh, with Leslie Visser. Les? Vern and Lenny, during the last time out, Chuck Daly told his team to work defensively. He said, don't let Jordy split the defense, and he emphatically repeated, keep working, keep working. On the other end, Phil Jackson wants his team to take better care of the long rebounds. There's one right there, tipped out. Michael Jordan. Jordan, short with a shot. Tip back, Edwards chases it down. It's going to be Detroit. Well, with the long rebounds, you know that there are a lot of shots being taken outside of the, free, of the free throw line, and both teams, again, doing a nice job inside, taking away the paint, pass, paint points. Isaiah Thomas. Aguirre. Horace Grant, short. McGuire not having a good quarter. The other thing both teams are doing is limiting the others to only one shot. One offensive rebound for Chicago, three for Detroit. Armstrong, no. Chased down by Detroit. Aguirre has it. He's one for five in this quarter now from the field. As a team, Detroit is 14 of 41. And Chicago, 14 of 40. 1.35 to go. Grant or Cartwright, who gets it? Well, you got to wonder why Grant would foul James Edwards at the rate both teams are shooting from outside. It's a safer bet to allow him to shoot with a hand in his face and go to the boards. Can't, you can't give them easy, easy points, which James Edwards, a pretty good free throw shooter, is about to do right now. He's shooting about 76% from the line during the playoff series. Kiss of death. At the conclusion of our game, Brian Elmore and I will select the Miller Lite player of the game. In conjunction with that award, Light Beer will present a check in the amount of $1,000 in the player's name to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Edwards misses both. Ed Neely comes on the court now for the final 90 seconds in the first half for Chicago. 36-34, Chicago up. As we said, they won game one here last year's traveling B.J. Armstrong. Drank his right foot. Jake O'Donnell calls it turns and runs the other direction. Why do I have a feeling that years from now Armstrong might get away with that? All you have to do is establish that reputation. But again, a, a foul on a shot that could have been defended and an easy turnover. Chicago can't self-destruct now. Illegal defense, Chicago, that's their second. So Detroit will shoot the technical now. Bill Jackson. 
Dumars gets to the second. He's now brings the assistant within one. Michael Jordan, as we said, went out with a hip injury at the end of the first quarter. Have you noticed a uh, deficiency in his play or a dropped uh, element of it? Well, no, certainly when he gets his hands on the ball. No, nope. <laughs> there's right the answer. Now, and we'll see here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but now that he doesn't have the ball, he's limping back. <laughs> Reminds me of what, what's the most important element of comedy, timing. Well, the ball certainly can be a magic elixir in the hands of creative people like Michael Jordan, injury or no injury. Jim Mars counters over Jordan. Final 45 seconds now of the first half. Actually, that's where it'll tell defensively. Michael Jordan would be in trouble on the defense right now. In the corner, B.J. Armstrong. Jordan, there's the triple on Jordan, and he goes right over Thomas and Rodman and Dumars. And he's limping again after he lets go of the ball. And as I said, defensively is where he has his difficulty. Eight of 14 now for Michael Jordan. So he's three of six since the injury. Dumars, nice drive along the baseline, but short with a shot. Edwards. Now uh, watch Michael Jordan's defensive effort. Well, there, James Edwards just fell asleep. And as I said, you know, that little salve that you rub on little hurts, the ball is the same thing when you got great players. And he limps after he lets it go. Defensively, though, on the last play, Joe Dumars went around Michael Jordan as if he were standing still. That's where he has the difficulty in reacting. Edwards misses his third consecutive free throw. And he's only one of five. Greg Hodges is going to check back in for the Bulls now. Billy Cartwright goes out. So Jordan, Hodges, and B.J. Armstrong for the final possession for Chicago. Get the shooters in there. Well, looking forward to the second half, the Bulls have to beware. They've got two banged-up guards in Michael Jordan and John Paxson. And what's going to happen is Craig Hodges, B.J. Armstrong are going to have to step up, step up the level of their play a bit to pick up where Michael Jordan left off, particularly in this half since he's been the bulk of the offense. Dumars gets the loose ball and puts it in. 12 seconds before halftime. Of course you do. Michael Jordan's three-pointer at the buzzer. Watch the mid-air adjustment, Len Elmore. Well, again, we mentioned reaction on defense. When you're on offense, you're creating. You don't have any pain. That's the end of the first half with our score. Chicago 43, Detroit 39. Pat O'Brien and Bill Raftery, along with the credential at the half, Michael Jordan has scored in the first half of game one of the Western Conference Finals. 26 of the 43, and that despite the fact that Michael Jordan has spent more time on the floor of the Palace than a newly purchased broom. He injured his left hip when he went down hard at the end of the first quarter, but he went down at least two or three more times, all the while hitting on 9 of 15 from the court and scoring 26 of the 43 points that Chicago has at halftime. And just as he went to the locker room at halftime, Leslie Visser had a chance to talk with Michael about the hip injury. Leslie? Vern, like good champagne, both John Paxson and Michael Jordan spent the entire halftime on ice. I spoke with both of the players. John Paxson said he's particularly sore. He doesn't even know if he'll play more than the 11 minutes he saw in the first half. As for Michael Jordan, he said it's really limiting his mobility. And I said just what you mentioned, Vern. I said, but Michael, you've already scored your season average against the Pistons. And he said, really? Maybe it doesn't hurt that much. <laughs> well, that goes back to the point Lynn Elmore made. You didn't notice the limp when he was going for the dunk, but you did see the limp when he came back and had to go on defense. But really, an outstanding Chicago effort in the first half, Len. Well, so far, they've done a great job defensively forcing Detroit to take the perimeter shots. Detroit's not converting, but Detroit's hurting their own effort. They get 10 offensive, eight offensive rebounds, 10 points there, but they can't convert from the free throw line, shooting about 45% in a 5 of 11 effort. So they have the opportunities, Detroit does. They've got to capitalize. 
not a real big surprise that Chicago is up, as we said in game one here a year ago. They won the opener, lost game two, went back to Chicago and won game three, so they were up two games to one. But then the Pistons won three in a row and captured the best of seven series, four games to two. Underneath it goes to Bill Cartwright, turnaround jump hook, no good. Rebound Rodman. Check the lineups as we start the second half. Isaiah Thomas, Rodman, Lambeer, James Edwards, and Joe Dumars for Detroit. John Paxson will give it a go at the start. Here's Isaiah Thomas for three, no. Lambeer with the putback, loose ball, foul, no basket. Foul on Lambeer. Well, when you don't get good position underneath, you force the push off. And that time, Bill Lambeer was blocked off and used his arm to push off. Pretty much, though, again, Chicago doing a nice job of trying to prevent Detroit from posting up and forcing the outside shot. That's the third foul on Lambeer, who's only one of three from the field. Jordan. Too strong. Another loose ball foul. That's on Scotty Pippen. That's his third. Bill Jackson got a technical. So I was going to say, you have to believe that Phil Jackson made that a strategic type of technical. He doesn't want his team to get manhandled. They're going to be on defense in front of his bench right now, and that's sending a message to the officials that he's not going to stand for allowing his guys to get rushed around and then not have it called on the other end. I don't see why it was done at this point, because it was balanced. The Pistons called for a loose ball on one end, the Bulls on the other. Joe Dumar has got the free throw, and Detroit has the ball threatened by three. 11.05 to go, third quarter. Isaiah bounces it back. That's going to be an over and back. As soon as it's touched. And Chuck Daly is not pleased at all. Interesting scenario here in the Palace prior to the game. A half an hour before the tap, Chuck Daly was doing his coach's show live. Certain relaxed air about it. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. That ball out of bounds. Chicago controls. Well, Chuck is not the only one who may have uh, had potential distractions here. His team, with the long layoff, they seem to have come out here pretty flat. And not so much from a playing standpoint, but from a mental standpoint. You don't see the intensity, at least in the first half, you didn't, as you thought you would from the Pistons. Jordan, good pick from Pippen on the pick and roll. And then a good defensive effort from James Edwards. Chased down by Rodman. Isaiah Thomas, Maxson right there. Back to Lambeer, who spots up for three. Air ball. Michael Jordan at the other end. Scotty Pippen tipped away by Thomas. Detroit ball. Well, that might be a start to increased intensity, particularly on the defensive end. Isaiah Thomas hustling back to get a hand on the ball. But if you look at the pace of this game, Detroit has dictated it, but it's played into the hands of the Bulls. They're able to get back and set up defensively nicely and do the job that they've been doing. Dumars, Jordan right there to deny him the baseline. Six on the shot clock, back to Isaiah. Stripped, Jordan controls, tipped out of bounds, Lambeer touched it last, it'll be Chicago's ball. Well, this is a Detroit team, Lenny, that hit 53% against Chicago in the first five games of regular season and only 36% so far. Watch well, the defense. This is one of the reasons why Michael Jordan does a nice job, he and Bill Cartwright, in slowing the movement of the ball and then stripping Isaiah Thomas on the perimeter. Stripped again. Other end, Dumars. That's two. Well, it's the defense that creates the momentum, particularly for the Pistons. They have to get out here and scratch and claw a little bit more in their half-court defense. Grant, air ball, on the line, Detroit ball. Well, in talking about this Piston team, Phil Jackson said they play such great defense, and then on offense, they just look for a weak link, try and exploit it, and it's worked very effectively. 43-42 from the corner. Pippen for Chicago. At the other end, Jordan, too strong. Both teams with the opportunities, but they just can't connect. 
and just to further amplify what Phil Jackson said, the thing that he's most worried about, particularly in the beginning of a half like this in a close game, is Detroit playing good defense and going on a run that kind of takes them out of reach. Right now, the Bulls have held their ground. Thomas. Edwards. Boy, Cartwright with the rebound. Detroit can't solve the Chicago defensive puzzle thus far. Horace Grant. Right side, Cartwright might have gotten away with a shove, and he puts the, the putback is in. 45, 42, eight and a half. This crowd getting a little restless now. Well, again, the, the Pistons are walking the ball up, and meanwhile, that's their style, but nevertheless, Chicago is back, able to set up, get people in the paint to prevent the post-ups, and now force Detroit to take shots with the clock running down. Cartwright gets caught in the switch and fouls Isaiah Thomas. That's three on Bill Cartwright. So he and Lampier have three, and uh, Scotty Pippen has three. You take a look at this play. Good defense here. Cartwright steps out. He just doesn't close the door on Isaiah Thomas by taking an angle away. But before that foul, the shot clock had gone down to six, and that's what the Bulls have done. They forced Detroit to take some shots with the clock running down to almost zero in four seconds. Uh, Dumar is on tip and goes by him and gets two. MVP of last year's finals with a 27 point per game average, Joe Dumars. Michael Jordan in the corner, quick ball rotation to Pippen for three. Grant saves it. Edwards back to Pippen. Finger roll for two. Give Cartwright a lot of credit for challenging James Edwards on that rebound. Dumars. He's got 16. And the guy who leads by example, Joe Dumars, has now stepped up a little bit to taking on some of the offensive load for the Pistons until the whole team gets on track. There's Rodman, the double team on Jordan. Quickly in the corner to Paxson. They come flying at him, and he puts it in the air. At the other end, here's Dumars for two. Timeout, Chicago. Detroit led by Joe Dumars has reclaimed the lead. Chicago at 2 o'clock Eastern. All of that will be topped off by the third round of the Atlantic Golf Classic at 4.30 Eastern time. And all of that comes to you next Saturday on CBS. And, and the reason you hear the cheering is because while it's not always advisable to have two guys on the ball, you give them an A for effort. The rebound goes to Lambeer, and Joe Dumars again steps forward to pick up the offense for the Pistons. But what's happened is Detroit brought the crowd back into the game, something that they need to lift their emotional spirits and also to increase their efforts. Joe Dumars with nine third quarter points, most on layups. Here's Jordan. Chased down by James Edwards. Detroit now four of eight from the field. Before the basket. Oh, Horace, Grant. Horace Grant picks up the foul. That's his second. And Detroit will put it in bounds. B.J. Armstrong has come on the court now for Chicago during the timeout. And, Ed, and Will Purdue getting ready to make his first entrance in the ball game. Armstrong guarding Isaiah Thomas. Dumars again. He's got 20 they moved so well without the ball in the backdoor cut. Isaiah Thomas found him. Armstrong counters at the other end. And it's a one-point Detroit edge with 6.20 to go, third quarter. You know, with Dumars stepping up offensively, Detroit has gone back to their game plan by making Michael George work on both ends of the floor. Edwards, Jordan down to double team him. Illegal defense and a technical foul. 21,000 plus on hand at the Palace in Auburn Hills, Michigan, where the Pistons are 85 and 11 in the last two years. Been a tough place to win if you're a road team. Detroit has come from four down at halftime on the shooting of Joe Dumars, and he will shoot the technical foul now after the illegal defense call. Got it. Dumars had a wonderful analogy. I thought about the success of this Detroit team, Lenny, 
He just talked about the key to their success. He said it's versatility. We're like 12 kids in a school classroom, all of whom know the answer. And it's just a matter of who's going to get called on. Well, that's pretty appropriate. Today, though, it took them a while. They must have conspired to find the answer. And they still haven't quite gotten it yet. But nevertheless, they're making the attempt to attack the Bulls' defense. Loose ball, turnover, taken away by B.J. Armstrong. Purdue has come in now for the first time. There's Will Purdue. Scotty Pippen guarded by Dennis Rodman. Armstrong, Isaiah Thomas. Traveling. Second time, Armstrong has been caught moving his pivot foot. And certainly, you got to believe Chuck Daly gave his team a good talking to. They came out here a little more aggressive defensively, contesting the movement of the ball, stepping up their defense, not allowing people to put it back on the floor and drive to the basket. And it's reaped some benefits for them. John Sally on for Detroit. That loose ball will be Detroit's to inbound. Check the lineup now for Detroit. They've got Rodman and Lambeer along with Sally. And at the guard spots, Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars. Stacey King checks in now for Chicago and Purdue's appearance was ever so brief. So it's King and Pippen along with Horace Grant, Armstrong, and Michael Jordan. Oh, a quick foul on Scotty Pippen, and oh boy, that's his fourth. Oh, it's a dead ball foul. Ball hadn't been inbounded. Pippen with the push off against Lambert. And it's one of those things where the officials may have seen the second one. Lambert stepped up to Pippen really tightly, and Pippen pushed him off. Here's something extraordinary in the playoffs. Bill Lambert at the free throw line. Well, certainly, up until now, 200 and over 270 minutes. I would imagine he's played a lot of minutes this game. Three times he's made attempts at the free throw line. And for a guy 6'11", that's unbelievable. Does that indicate to you he's probably not going to the basket? Offensively, <laughs> I would say that he's pitched a tent right around the three-point area. But, I mean, you look at his game, and really they're playing to the strengths of Bill Embiid's game. He's never been a great post-up player. He's blessed with a great touch from outside and an uncanny knack for finding people inside with his passing ability. So rather than try to change the guy, they play to that strength, and they've been very successful with it. Well, that's his fifth free throw of the playoffs in 1990, and he gets one of two. And it's a three-point Detroit Edge. Their largest lead of this ball game, four in the second quarter. Largest lead by Chicago with seven in quarter number one. Grant back to Jordan. Gets caught in this match and gains his first basket of this half. He's got 28 points now. And then Chuck Daly jump up and scream across to the ball. Michael Jordan came off open. Dumars over Jordan. On this end of the floor, though, on their offensive end, you know the Pistons are going to continue to make him work. 54-51. Joe Dumars, 23 points. Michael Jordan with 28. What a matchup. And there they are. Two more for Jordan. That time, Bill Lambert stepped out to become the help person. He was supposed to go and double-team Michael Jordan, but Jordan got to the corner so quickly, Lambert just couldn't catch up with him. One point for Troy Dale. John Strong seeing a lot of action because of the injury and relative ineffectiveness to John Paxson. Sprained ankle. Underneath to Sally. Off the glass over Stacey King. The Bulls have now come out and contested the Pistons as the Pistons spread their offense, and that's opened it up inside. Grant for Chicago. Can't shake them. Well, this is a good opportunity for the versatility of the Bulls' offense to come before. Horace Grant has got to get involved as well as Scottie Pippen. Pick set by Bill Lambert. There's a pick and fade rather than a pick and roll. He starts up to the three. And a shot no good at the other end. But Thomas, loose ball foul. Loose ball foul well, they on Isaiah it. Thomas. I think they should have called it on John Sally. It looked as though it was Sally who was doing the holding inside of, of Stacey King. Fifty-six, fifty-five. Vinny Johnson getting ready to come back on the court for the Detroit Pistons. 
Armstrong, give him the shot. They'll give it back, give him that shot all day. Here's Dumars for Detroit. Back to Thomas. Caught Lambeer free. Sally. Isaiah Thomas. Good defense by the Bulls, but when Isaiah Thomas wants to get a shot, he's going to get it. And another foul called at the other end. Time has been called. The foul is called on John Sally. It's Detroit by three. Well, you take a look at this particular play, the grand handoff to Michael Jordan. Chuck Daly mentioned he didn't want Michael Jordan to get the ball at his waist because that's a triple threat position. Michael Jordan can now look inside for the pass, put it on the floor and go either way or shoot the jump shot. You got to crowd him. And that time Bill Lambeer just stepped out, really didn't contest it. And you see the result. 30 points for Michael Jordan playing with an injured left hip and a bruised right hip, I think. 58-55, 2.59 to go quarter number three. And when you look at any player, any fundamentally sound player who gets in the triple threat position, they usually can do something to help their team and hurt you defensively, but you add a Michael Jordan to that equation, and it's really going to be a hard night for you if you allow him to get it where he wants it, and that is on the hip. Armstrong is guarded by Benny Johnson. Ed Neely's come on for Chicago as well. There's Dumars and Johnson. Uh, Jordan for three. That one no good. Lambeer saves it for Detroit. And a chance for the largest lead of the game now for the Pistons. That shot may be out of Michael Jordan's range if there is such a thing. But that's the kind of shot the Pistons can live with. Uh, Jordan will guard Benny Johnson this time down. And they put Armstrong on Dumars who posts him up. And hits the jump. Well, it's the consummate pro again against the learning and eager rookie. The little bump is what froze Armstrong. Largest lead of the ball game now for the Detroit Pistons. Stacy King left hand is up. Well, Stacy King has come on strong for the Bulls, as we mentioned before. Offensively, he's matured an awful lot and given them a post threat. Dumars, 11 of 18 now, and 25 points. There's the switch. Lambeer with a pump fake and goes by Pippen. You don't draw too many fouls doing that. <laughs> but you make your coach happy. <laughs> when it goes in, and it usually does when Lambeer hits that shot. Final 90 seconds, quarter number three, a five-point edge. Here in game one, Eastern Conference Finals. Nice drive and the dish. Armstrong to Ed Neely. Well, that's the triumvirate that's done such a great job off the bench. Stacey King, B.J. Armstrong, and now Ed Neely who's come off. Ed Neely almost single-handedly won a game for Philadelphia with his play off the bench. Surprised they're going to keep Armstrong on Dumas. Here's Johnson. And he'll shoot a couple. And players are down. Benny Johnson. Oh, Scotty. Scotty, Pippen. Scotty Pippen picks up his fifth foul. And the concern right now with Benny Johnson. We see Michael Jordan on Benny Johnson. The crossover as Michael turned his head. Pretty tough call on Scott Pippen. He may have reached in just a bit, but it didn't look as though it interfered in any way. Vinnie Johnson's uh, movement towards the basket. So, Vern, getting back to your question before and asking me, am I surprised that DJ Armstrong is still on Joe Dumars? Michael Jordan has to have a rest at mm -hmm. some point. Okay. Now, he's not going to get much of a rest with Vinnie Johnson and Joe Dumars in the backcourt, but I, I think that Vinnie Johnson's limited range to a certain extent allows Michael Jordan to play off him a bit and then the rest there. Here's Armstrong, who will be guarded at the other end by Vinnie Johnson. 64-59, back to a five-point margin. The legal defense against Detroit, so Chicago will shoot the technical. Michael Jordan, scoring by the guards, Jordan and Dumars. 30 points for Michael Jordan, 25 for Joe Dumars. 
and they're matched up uh, have been for most of the game today. And the thing about Joe Dumars is that he's not a gaudy type player. You look at the third quarter, 16 points, he gives it to his team when they need it most. And at the beginning of the third quarter, they had to come out here and establish some type of offense, and Joe Dumars was the man. Good ball denial by Jerome Sally. John Sally, you know where Jerome came from, all of a sudden. Dumars. Dumars! Sixty six sixty. Ed Neely. And he'll shoot a couple. And in the bottom left hand side of your screen, a moment ago, Joe Dubois approached the official Wally Rooney and asked him the license plate of that truck that hit him. <laughs> Number forty five, Ed Neely throwing his body around inside. He's the physical presence that's necessary for the Bulls to really stay competitive. He knocks people around, he frees people up with this pick, and the bonus is that he gets around the basket, has good hands, and is able to get the dish off. You see the drive here by Michael Jordan. Oh, boy. And again, the physical presence in there. Dennis Rodman knows who he is. Neely misses both. The lead stays at six, and Detroit will have a chance for the last shot of the third quarter. Joe Dumars has been on fire in quarter number three with 18 points. Blocked by Horace Grant. And he picks up his third foul. Well, Lampere is going to more than double his number of free throws in the previous uh, playoff game. He's going back to the line. Well, particularly on that jump shot. It's a nice little technique for guys that are running out at you. He takes the jumper, but his legs are still kicked out, and it makes it difficult for the guy defending not to make contact with you as he goes by. Lampere now one of three. And when you don't get to the line that often, you really magnify your displeasure with a miss. Lead is seven. Intercepted by Dumars. In the third quarter, the Detroit Pistons outscored Chicago by 11 points. That's the end of the third with our score. Detroit 67, Chicago 60. We'll return to the Palace of Auburn Hills after this message and a word from your most scored by 11 points. Detroit now has a seven-point edge. And in the third quarter, Joe Dumars outscored the Chicago Bulls 18 to 17. Most of that done with layups as he somewhat abused B.J. Armstrong, who was trying to get Michael Jordan a defensive rest. And also, some of them came off of turnovers created by a much more animated Detroit defense. That is the ninth time in the playoffs thus far that the Pistons have held an opponent under 20 points in a quarter. Chicago comes up with 17. Check the lineup as we begin the fourth quarter. Aguirre has come in now with Joe Dumars, John Sally, Benny Johnson, and Bill Lambeer. B.J. Armstrong still draws the defensive assignment. On Dumars, the shot, no. Ed Neely pulls it down for the Bulls. It's King and Pippen playing with five fouls along with Hodges. There's the entry pass. Stacy King. Offense. Offense. Bill Lambeer yelled offense and Jake O'Donnell said no. Stacy King with that acrobatic that attempt at the basket still has a little trouble in gaining the Stacey handle King. of the ball when it's passing in his traffic. But you look at the Chicago offense right now without Michael Jordan in, they've got a front line of Pippen. King and Neely, and really it's Scott Pippen who's going to have to now unburden himself with whatever he's doing and get involved in the offense a little more. He's the big threat on the floor right there. Maybe Craig Hodges from three points. Pippen with eight points and playing with five fouls. Stacy King, there's Michael getting a rest as Phil Jackson rests him at the start of the fourth quarter. Armstrong. 10 second count underway. They're going to have to hurry. Made it. Lambeer. 
Neely, quick out the pass. Stacy King. Well, that's one of the ways you hide the weakness on the offense is to go out there, apply pressure, run the clock down, make the other team go out of its offensive pattern so you can get the rebound and come back and set up. Hodges back to Pippen over Benny Johnson. Short with a three-pointer. He started down at the other end. Didn't follow the shot. Five-point Detroit edge. We played a minute and five seconds of the fourth quarter. Two teams play here on Tuesday night. And games three and four next weekend. Memorial Day weekend on CBS. And here for two. Good job by Aguirre in drawing the defenders to him under the basket and seeing a cutting Lambeer go to the basket. Johnson guards Hodges. Dumars on Armstrong. King sets a back screen for Craig Hodges. There's Stacey King. And he'll shoot a couple more. Fourth foul on Bill Lambeer. Isaiah Thomas, just back, in. Isaiah Thomas back into the lineup, and Joe Dumars will get a rest. James Edwards also going to re-enter the floor for Detroit. <laughs> Lambeer sitting down with his fourth foul. Michael Jordan comes back on, replacing B.J. Armstrong for the Bulls. Little chess game here, Chuck Daly and, and Phil Jackson. Chuck Daly recognizing that there's a rookie playing the post, brings in his best inside guy, James Edwards. And knowing that there's going to be some exploitation there on that end, Phil Jackson feels he needs a big offensive push, and then he brings Michael Jordan back in, maybe a little earlier than he wanted to. King misses both. Chicago 10 of 15 from the free throw line. McGuire backing in on Pippen, who has to give him room. The follow and a foul, Ed Neely. Certainly when Chuck Daly talks about, you know, his team's defense, as Bill Jackson says that they like to exploit people on their offensive end, two things happen. Chuck Daly's defense now can back up a little bit with this lead and seal off the middle again. And on offense, they recognize certainly they have an advantage with Mark McGuire being guarded by Ed Neely, and they've been going to it. Now Bill Cartwright back into the lineup. Stacy King will sit down for Chicago. McGuire gets them both. He's got four points. The lead, largest of the game, nine points, 71-62. And we're under the 10-minute mark. Cartwright trying to give a screen for Pippen, now calls for the ball. Back it goes to Neely. Jordan over Vinny Johnson. No. Isaiah Thomas hustled for the rebound. Mark Aguirre. In and out. He's one of six from the field. 9.25 to go. 71-62. Pippen over Edwards. And you think Edwards didn't have a presence there. It's been an overall tough day for Scottie Pippen right there. But there's still enough time for him to get on track. What he's got to do, though, is possibly help out Ed Neely. Vinny Johnson, Cartwright in his face. Sally flying in for the rebound. And he'll shoot two free throws as Ed Neely draws the foul. 8.55 remaining in game number one. Best of seven series between Detroit and Chicago. Game one at halftime, Lenny and I saw Jerry Krause, the Bulls, backstage. He was really pacing, quite nervous. Well, let's see if he still is. He's with Leslie Visser. Leslie? That's right, Vern. He is trying to gather his composure. Jerry, the highly regarded vice president of operations, tell us a little bit about when you went to make a coaching change, what made you hire a guy, Bill Jackson, who his former teammate, Walt Frazier, once called an unbridled eccentric. I mean, this guy lived in Woodstock. Well, certainly, Phil has all of the qualifications we wanted. We felt that he had paid his dues in the CBA and uh, developed the coaching style we liked, and uh, certainly we've been uh, totally satisfied with the job he's done this year, Leslie. What about this game? What
what do you have to do to get back in it? Well, we've got to get some people to step up and, and get some things going other than Michael, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to do that in the next uh, uh, eight minutes and, and get going. We've played well in the fourth quarter in previous playoff games. We need to do it again. We'll see if it happens. Thank you, Jerry. Vern? Hi, Leslie. There is the unbridled eccentric, Phil Jackson, graduate of the University of North Dakota, a longtime player with the New York Knicks. Said he credits Red Holzman with a lot of his coaching philosophy, Tech's winner as well, and John Bach, both of whom are on the bench with him right now. Well, you heard uh, Jerry Krause refer to Phil Jackson's style, and it's a style that's meshed real well with the Bulls' personnel. He's not a hollow-type guy. He likes players to play within themselves, but nevertheless, he's not going to try to alter anybody's game. He's going to show them the way, and most importantly, he gets along with Michael Jordan. Valid point. And we don't want to forget the others who've influenced Phil Jackson's notable among them, Kevin Lockery. And here's John Sally at the free throw line. Eight points and three rebounds. 8.55 to go. The lead now in double digits for the first time today. Neely and Hodges join Jordan, Pippen, and Cartwright on the floor for Chicago. Benny Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, Mark McGuire, Sally, and James Edwards for Detroit. Pippen having a tough day. He's 4 for 11. 21,000 plus on hand at this beautiful basketball facility north of Detroit, Auburn Hills, the Palace, where the Pistons trail by four at halftime, 43-39. But they outscored Chicago 28-17 in the third quarter, and they have an 11-point lead right now with 8.20 to go in game number one. Underneath, knocked away, and Pippen gets it for Chicago. Hodges, back to Pippen. That's a big one for Chicago. Three-pointer. It's a big one for Scott Pippen's confidence as well. He knows he's going to be needed as this game wears on in this fourth quarter. But most importantly, where the Bulls' offense went south, they now have to step up. They're going to have to take some quicker shots. James Edwards call with an offensive foul away from the ball. That's his second. And Chicago now following Pippen's three-pointer. Trails by eight. Michael Jordan had 26 at the half, five in the second half. Here's Jordan with Benny Johnson on it. Hodges. Brought down by Edwards. Aguirre. And Mark McGuire goes to the free throw line. Well, there are some rebounds available on the offensive board. Phil Jackson's got to find somebody who can convert them. Ed Neely on that particular play, before Detroit came down on the offensive end, really had a chance to put the ball back in, but didn't. And I believe Horace Grant has replaced him right now. They need somebody to take advantage of their opportunities. Detroit's doing it. Yes. That's one of two. Chicago Bulls in their series against Philadelphia had big fourth quarters. As Jerry Krause said, outscored them by consecutively three, four, 14, 19, and 10 points. And they need that uh, same kind of an effort here in the final 729. And you know, a lot of that obviously has been clear out and an open floor for Michael Jordan, who literally takes over for his team when they're competitive in the fourth quarter. The Bulls hope to get competitive at least in the next four minutes to allow him to really take over. Johnson shaking loose. There's Jordan on the curl pattern, but has trouble. Kicks it out to Cartwright. Back to Armstrong for the jumper. Now Pippen for three. Yes, that's two in a row for Scotty Pippen. And a great substitution. Ed Neely, while he's a competent player, doesn't have the skills of a Horace Grant, who got that offensive rebound and found Scott Pippen along the three-point area. 75-68. Johnson. The feed from Isaiah Thomas, and Benny Johnson has 10. That equals his playoff average. Here's Jordan at the other end. He kisses the glass and gets two. He's got seven and a half now, and 33 in the ballgame. game. 
No surprise that uh, this game's not going to be scored in triple digits by either team. Well, they're certainly putting forth the effort defensively. Isaiah Thomas. There's the answer for Detroit with a three-pointer. Well, Isaiah had been quiet, but again, you can't really fault the Bulls' defense because that's the kind of shot that you want to give up, if anything. Michael Jordan misfires. He's 12 and 23. Huge rebound edge now for Detroit at 42 to 30. Johnson cuts through. Jordan with the rebound. He finds Scotty Pippen. Grant. Aguirre for Detroit. Four shot selection by Horace Grant. He takes a 22 footer with no red shirts in the paint. He misses that. You might as well hand it to the piston. Slow down and. Looks like they might have gotten. James Edwards, his third foul. Time has been called. 5-19 remaining in the ballgame. The lead is our score here. Looks like a good finish coming up at the Colonial after our game. Right now, let's check in with Leslie Visser. Vernon, both huddles. Each team was concerned about the rebounding. Also, the pick and roll. Chuck Daly wants his players to stay home on the pick and roll. Phil Jackson is particularly concerned about the Pistons' offensive rebounding. He told his team, body up. Let's move these guys around. Vern They've got 5.19 to do it. There's Chuck Daly. Well, you know why he wants them to stay at home on the pick and roll, not to create any openings for the roll guy. The Bulls haven't proven, other than Michael Jordan, that they can hit that perimeter shot with consistency, and that just further seals their fate in this game if they cannot put that down. Offensive rebounds now 10 to 5 for Detroit. Armstrong, Pippen, Cartwright, Jordan and Grant for Chicago. Here's Michael Jordan, Vinny Johnson, that shot's off the mark. And even Michael Jordan has caught some of that disease on the perimeter, not able to really put the ball down in wide open shots. That's six rebounds for Isaiah Thomas, who has the ball right now. Armstrong takes a swipe at it. Pippen tries to save it for Chicago. Yeah, he couldn't do it. Uh, Chuck Daly's going to his bench again. A well-rested Joe Dumars, Dennis Rodman, and Bill Lambeer will replace Benny Johnson, James Edwards, and Mark McGuire. Who depart the palace floor to a standing ovation. And particularly with Rodman and Sally in, you know offensively Detroit's going to go to Joe Dumars and Isaiah Thomas as much as they can to create openings and either exploit them themselves or dish it off to some guys for some wide open shots. But defensively, Sally and Rodman are going to try and take over inside. This is that point in time when Detroit wants to lower the boom. Dumars with 18 third quarter points ignited the spark that uh, brought Detroit from four down to 11 up. Right now, the lead is 10. Isaiah Thomas cuts through two men, doesn't get the goal, but the follow is there from John Sally. And it was Isaiah Thomas's penetration that created the opportunity for John Sally to crash the board. Dean Rodman, great offensive rebounder. That's why they're there. Sally has 11, joining Benny Johnson in double figures off the bench. We thought that might be a factor today for Detroit. They have such experience and talent. Here's Pippen. Two more for Scotty Pippen, who's played the duration of this fifth, uh, fourth quarter with five fouls. Traveling call. Technical foul follows that. Isaiah's got to be careful. He can't lose his composure like that. His team is up 10 points. He certainly did carry, and I'm sure he's the kind of guy, when he sees a replay at home on his VCR, he'll recognize that it was a good call by the official. There's Jordan with the tee. Take a look As at you it. Watch him come down. Watch him put his hand. He carries the ball, hits his body. And it certainly was a good call. Well, Billy Oaks made the call. And then Isaiah rather vociferously disagreed with it. 
Not the technical. Now Chicago has the ball trailing by nine. And it wasn't so much that the ball hit his body, but his hand went under the ball to control it as he put it back down. And that's turning it over. Jordan gets the ball to Grant back to Armstrong. Well, they keep giving him that shot, and B.J. Armstrong cans this one. Lead is seven with three and a half to go in the ball game. Detroit's down by four at the half. That scored Chicago 28-17 in the third quarter to take command. Lambeer. Rims out, Pippen. Lambeer was not the first option, obviously. Joe Dumars was really tightened up by the Chicago Bulls. Offensive foul. Wow. Think he's in his first year? Huh? Against a veteran who just had a technical call against him. Those things happen. B.J. Armstrong, second foul, third team foul. <laughs> Chuck Daly with a little trotter behind his back action there. I don't think that was purposeful. He had to laugh at it. Maybe he's looking for highlight films for his show. <laughs> 306 remaining. 82-75. Joe Dumars, Michael Jordan back on him now. Dumars was matched up against B.J. Armstrong when he scored most of those 18 third quarter points. Thomas. This time Isaiah doesn't bother to disagree with the call. That is a look of chagrin, but his team is up by seven. 248 to get playoffs continue next weekend on CBS. The Memorial Day weekend will begin with the basketball show on Saturday at 1.30. Then game three of this series between the Pistons and the Bulls at 2 o'clock Eastern. On Sunday, we'll give you the Western Conference Final Game 4 from Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Phoenix, Portland, and Gage at 3.30 Eastern Time. And then on Memorial Day, on Monday, the basketball show at 2.30 Eastern Time, followed by Eastern Conference Final Game 4 between Chicago and Detroit. Right now, let's get a quick check-in with Leslie Bissett. Les? Vern, just now in the huddle, Phil Jackson was very calm and very specific. He gave each man his assignment. He said, stay you block out Sally, no offensive rebounds, and Michael, get up there, be all over Dumars. Vern? All right, Les. First of all, Michael's going to have Dumars all over him for this possession. There's the switch and the pick and roll, and Michael finds Horace Grant underneath, but he traveled. It's really a tough play right there. Horace Grant with a great pass from Michael Jordan had the opportunity. 2.35 to go. Isaiah Thomas, B.J. Armstrong. Jordan comes out to help. That leaves Dumars open. And this is a shot that Lambeer gets the rebound. He too gets away with a little shove on. Right. There's that pick and fade or spot up by Lambeer with Thomas. This time Isaiah keeps the ball. Six in the shot clock. Sally. Traveling. And that's a real tough play right there. The intent was to run a lot of time off the clock, but when you get the opportunity for a shot, you've got to be able to get one. There they ran a lot of time off, but didn't come out with anything. Timeout has been called by the Chicago Bulls. It comes with 159 remaining in game one. And Detroit up by nine remaining here. Timeout. Chicago has two left plus a 20. Detroit three left plus a 20. Chicago has one foul to give and the Pistons two. Those of you who watched that uh, exciting game seven from Portland yesterday saw Portland come back from a seven point deficit in about this same amount of time. They were down 97 90 with just under two minutes to go and tied it up to send it into overtime. Certainly for that, have, for that to happen here today, you're going to need a quicker pace here in the last two minutes or so. That was a very fast-paced game played yesterday. These guys are walking it up in a half-court set. Jordan off the mark, and an offensive foul. Loose ball called on Bill Cartwright. Michael Jordan had 26 at halftime, only eight in the second half of play. And Bill Cartwright picks up his fourth foul. Scotty Pippen has five for Chicago. 140 remaining, game one. Third time these two have 
Third time in a row these two have met in the playoffs. It was the semifinals two years ago, the conference finals last year, and Detroit has prevailed on each occasion. Thomas, four on the shot clock as they run time off. Two, one, no. Grant with a rebound, stripped away, and the putback by Dennis Rudd. Well, certainly the Chicago Bears wanted a foul call there, but Horace Grant committed a cardinal sin tight game, brought the ball down to his waist, and allowed Isaiah Thomas to get his hands on it. He got to come out there rough and aggressive with it. Hampry pass. Jordan. Gives it left side to Cartwright for two. 56 seconds remaining in game one. The Pistons have broken the, the pressure, the double team by the Bulls by splitting it, either with a pass like Isaiah Thomas did just then or with the body to be able to see. Dumars, 18 in the third quarter, but none in the fourth. And here's Pippen. Jordan spots up for three. In and out. Edwards tries to control it. Detroit ball. Bill Lambeer will enter the fray now with the final 31.5 seconds, and Stacy King counters for Chicago. Edwards will sit down, as will Bill Cartwright. 84 77. At the other end, Rodman. It was almost embarrassing. Looking forward to game two. The Bulls certainly have to be happy with the way they played defense in the first half, at least. But what they have to find a way is to get the ball to some other people, to get some other people involved in the offense. I thought that was going to happen in this game. Michael Jordan misses the three at the end. The final score, Detroit wins it by 86 to 77 as they hold Chicago to 39% from the field for the game. Coming up next on CBS, Detroit wins game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. Miller Lite player of the game is Joe Dumars, who finished with 27 points and three rebounds. And Joe is standing by with Leslie Bissett. Joe Dumars, emphasis on do. Joe, why were you so effective today? Uh, just came out a little bit more aggressive in the second half off offensively. Uh, just trying to take it to him. What about Michael Jordan? You, know, you, you faced him a dozen of time, times. Did you tell he was affected by his hip? Yeah, uh, second half he came out. Uh, he looked a little stiff. Uh, he didn't have the same mobility he had in the first half and uh, tried to just go at him. And just finally, how important is it to win the first game of a seven-game series? It's really important. They came in here last year and won the first game and uh, put us in a hole of such. But uh, we just wanted to guard against that today get the first two wins, and I'll try to go to Chicago. Well done. Thank you, Joe. Back to you, Vern. All right, and on Joe's behalf, Miller Lite donates $1,000 to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. The final score, 86-77. Detroit takes a 1-0 edge in the series.